I'm a researcher with IRIS here in Montreal. Fantastic. And could you uh, tell us a little bit about IRIS and uh, your work there? Yes, IRIS, it's, uh, it's a think tank. It's a research, in, uh, research institute that does not dedicate itself only to academic uh, work. Uh, I used to, I, I always say that Iris is half of his work is research, research and the other half is communication because we, uh, our work is uh, directed to the public debate. It's, it's built to be influential into the, debate, uh, uh, the, the public debate and it tries to bring a, a progressive standpoint on basically any issues that can uh, be uh, uh, that can appear in our uh, society. Uh, my work is, uh, yeah, it have been a lot on health. Uh, for many years I've been the, the guy working on health at IRIS, uh, but now for some years I've been, um, but we all are quite generalist uh, in our institute. And I've been working um, on uh, public finances, uh, public, uh, public finances, uh, ser public services, uh, housing also, so these, these are my, my field of study. Fantastic. And so we're here today to speak about um, the Quebec healthcare system. And I'll tell you the question and then after we'll answer, but um, specifically the new deal with um, family doctors. Um, so what do you know about this deal and what can you kind of share about what's going on with family doctors in Quebec at the moment? Uh, yes, yeah, so... Um, so, uh, so that new plan right now uh, is not convincing us a lot. There is some interesting ideas that could be uh, that could be useful to make our system better. Uh, uh, but there are also um, problem uh, 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 propose, pr proposition that seem to us to be uh, not enough, and even some other proposition that could be uh, threatening for the uh, health system. So um, on the specific aspect of the physician, uh, right now one of the positive things uh, that, uh, that our that new plan uh, where it brings us, there's all the, um, a better, um, a better repartition. Um, partition? There's a better repartition between many health professional of uh, of the work because there it's it's been a problem now for decades or even since the mid of the 20th century uh, in Quebec and almost everywhere uh, in 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 the western world where we concentrate a lot of the work of the decision into the health system on the physician the physician have, have became some kind of a person uh, at the top of a, a health hierarchy so now what we finally seen uh, to be doing in Quebec, trying a little more, is to let other professionals take a better part in the system and take a, a bigger part of the of the workload, let's say. So that part is a positive part. The, the, the physicians seem to me uh, to to uh, to agree with that with that change. So that part is is positive. Then uh, where it's not at all that positive is that we rely a lot on uh, the Groupe de Médecine Familiale, which which are uh, some, uh, which is um, uh, a structure that have been, have not uh, delivered uh, the service it was supposed to deliver since its creation at the beginning of the year 2000, more or less. It have been built uh, as a request, some kind of request of the physician that historically have not been willing to work into the community services, into the community work in Quebec, what we call the CLSC. It was supposed to be the, the, the main innovation, the main part of the system. It was a, at first it was really a democra a democratical, democratic um, institution, really connected, almost grassroots, huh? the, the, all that CLSC uh, dynamics into the system. But the physician were, were not enough influential into these structures, so they they've been kept. Uh, they, they wanted to keep to keep their distance, and they basically preferred to open their or their own uh, their own um, 
little uh, clinics. Uh, so at the beginning of the two year 2000, these physicians uh, uh, and the government wanted to uh, solve what keep, uh, what's still the main problem of our health system, which is the access, the access to the services. And when you talk about the access, it is what we also call the first line of services. So they created this, this Groupe de Médecine Familiale, where basically the physicians are still the boss. Uh, and it has not been a big, uh, a big success. We still, um, uh, we still caught into that system where the, phys the the physician decide more or less everything. So now we have these new, this new uh, plan for health in Quebec. We rely a lot on these uh, GMF that haven't been uh, uh, yet able to show that they are able to. Uh, to, um, to offer the service they're supposed to do. I'll just say one example of this to show all the, uh, once again, the, the uh, so it's even absurd in some certain case because when you build that first line, when we have, you have these clinics that are supposed to be, give a better access to the services to the people, close to their home with a big, uh, big, uh, uh, many uh, uh, opening uh, hours, um, they uh, they were supposed to uh, make the emergency less used so we were asking these uh, these uh, gmf to uh, engage themselves to sign a contract with the system to say we and these are private facilities huh? we gonna offer we're gonna stay open uh, every friday every saturday every domingo uh, uh, sunday for uh, for uh, a big part of the day, even sometime the night. So it was their, the thing they were supposed to do, but, at, but it never worked, first of all. And at certain point, what, some of these GMF uh, decided to um, sous-traiter. Um, uh, tender, oh, no, tender is a uh, competition sous-traiter. Uh, when you have a uh, uh, no, no, it's very logical. It's not that. Uh, uh, I don't remember, but they, they they decided to pay other facilities to make the services they were not offering. And what were these other facilities they paid? to uh, make the search. it was the the emergencies from the hospital so it's completely absurd and this is just one example of the many many example you have seen of why the gmf is not offering uh, the services they're supposed to offer and they are not connected well with the the, the needs of the communities where they are in so that part of the plan for us it's not is not at all convincing yes yeah i guess um do you see this new plan kind of falling to the same fate as the plan from the early 2000s, and why? Um, uh, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see, but we're really uh, skeptical. It is uh, at the early 2000s. It was a real, real open move toward the private uh, sector. It was at, at that at that time there was uh, total openness. And it was without any uh, hesitation. We say that the private sector will save the public services, and it was a re really, um, really radical discourse in favor of the private system. Twenty years later, it's not that clear at which point, at which point the the, the population really believe that pr privatizing the services will work it's 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 it, the world has been changing a lot I, I think that we still have a lot of people really open to private uh, involvement into healthcare in Quebec uh, that's that's true but it's not as magical as we've seen in the past uh, uh, people seem to be a little more um, cynical uh, sometimes uh, I believe so th this is one, one this is one difference. Uh, I think it is not as clear uh, about uh, the private sector. And one of the things that we are doing, one of the objectives right now, is to decentralize. And that part is uh, mainly positive, because at the beginning of the year 2000, or even the, 
the last reform, which which was the uh, Gaetan Barret reform at the, uh, in the 2000 and, uh, in 2013, I think, it so much, but we um, but we uh, we closed uh, about nine hospitals in the 90s, it just in Montreal, about the equivalent of nine hospitals. So it's huge. And we've been uh, doing this also during the year 2000. And we had the austerity uh, of uh, Philippe Couillard also that have been that made a lot of damage into that system. So um, so we haven't seen uh, we have not never fully recovered from these different waves of, of of austerity. Uh, you can have period which when when we put a little more money. But that money is barely just to pay for the, uh, the cost, the natural evolution of the system cost. So you don't give a lot of fresh air to that system, never for the last many decades now. And you don't allow that system to um, develop new things to, uh, to, uh, to cover some new areas. We can talk about mental health or uh, health at work or so many fields where well, public, public health, where we would need that, that system to be creative, to be close to people. What you have in that system is just people totally frightened, crushed by so many cuts and, uh, and, and condemned to be always in a, a posture of resistance. So you don't have some, you, you don't, and, and you, you end up having a population that doesn't trust the system that much, and you end up having a population that think that thinks that the system is bad because it is public, because the public has, uh, the, the government has uh, treated so badly the system for, for so many times. So the cuts, yes, is fundamental to understand our problem. And how has uh, the new government have kind of fit in there? Does, have they kind of worsened the situation or it's just kind of maintained the same? Uh, but the thing is that that, that government, I've, I've been most of it, I've been in, during a pandemic, which have been so many things have been uh, different as a normal. The one thing that we should say about this government is they were elected with the promise of cutting uh, the, the, the money we give to the physician, especially the, the physician, the, the specialist. They, they haven't done it. Right? The promise have been uh, uh, watered down and then have been disappeared somewhere. And we don't talk at, uh, at all about this. I think they knew that it would have been a very hard fight against uh, against the, the physicians, which so just abandoned it. It, it, it totally disappeared in uh, some far memory from the pre-pandemic uh, world. And now during the pandemic, they've been confronted to uh, the impact, the consequences have, have been, been so bad with that system for so long. The public health, it was on terrible shape. Uh, the um, long-term care facilities were in terrible shape. And, and we've seen what happened, especially in Quebec, with the old people, the older people that, that died at, at, the, at rate comparable to some of the worst, the, the worst hit countries in the world. Uh, so they've been forced a little bit to reinvest, but force when you, you're totally in the, the last retrenchment, you're, you're, you're so, you're, you, you, don't, you don't have any more choice. They realized that they needed people to work on these facilities, so they needed to offer better uh, working conditions to these people. So they reversed some tendencies, but not, not because they were visionary or something, because they were just totally forced to work in front of the contractor. So, so we see this plan, this, this plan right now uh, is the first one that is offering some kind of vision for the future and as we, uh, from that party and from that government. And so, uh, as I said, we're not convinced about it, but, but, uh, but it's, it's, yeah, uh, uh, it's the first real proposition from that party because four, four years ago when we had the last uh, provincial electoral campaign, health wasn't really an issue. We, we that party have been uh, talking a lot about education, but health wasn't that much an issue. So before the pandemic, to, I believe they considered that they had not many uh, any uh, particular uh, they hadn't any particular project except for reducing the fees of the the physician.
And so the pandemic has kind of put that extra pressure on governments to really... Do you think it was kind of um, when we brought this conversation back into light, or it, we just kind of got to this point where it had to be addressed? Uh, probably both, but the pandemic made it absolutely uh, incontournable. Uh, unavoidable. In, unavoidable, exactly. Um, yes, because um, um, uh, the pandemic have shown many of the terrible uh, weaknesses of that system, weaknesses that many actors in society, including us, have been showing, talking about, uh, but the pandemic made it so clear uh, that it was unavoidable yeah, to, uh, to, to, to propose, to say something. Then uh, the election were coming, so they needed to be something else than just a government that, that were not really good with a the pandemic. They needed to show where they go. They have that uh, minister, Christian uh, Dubé, the health minister, which is uh, some kind of manager that formerly had the Caisse de dépôt de placement du Québec. So some kind of person that it's, 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 um, it's a, it's a manager and a manager in some kind of the, the in that universe of managers, uh, they need to be showing some dream and some direction and everything. So I think it, 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 he's offering this kind of thing right now. He's selling something uh, to the public. Um, I, I think we need need to do something. So I think he's right on this. And, and as we said many times, and some of the, the things that are touched by the, that, that plan are good ideas or, or things that have to be addressed. but. As I said, it's uh, it's not going to be a rev revolution right now. What we have on the table, it's yeah. So you don't think it's going to reduce wait times for people getting access to family doctors? Um, I doubt it. I doubt it really much because uh, because it's um, well. First of all, I think that the access to family doctors is not as important as the access to the services. And this is one of the things that some few few physicians have been saying in the past, and I, I found it totally logical. We have some kind of fetish in Quebec right now with the, with the, uh, the, the access to a family doctor. Of course, it's not a bad thing to have a family doctor, but our objective should not be to have a family doctor that takes more people and could be ending up taking less care of all these people. We, we should have as an objective as a society to give access to services on the good time to everybody in the, in the society. So for me, it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little difference. Then we had so many of these governments promising to uh, reduce the wait time. It's a total, uh, yeah, they, they, they fail. All about um, concentration, concentration to into the end of bigger and bigger structure. It's exactly the kind of structure that doesn't work, work in health. Uh, in health, we don't need uh, uh, private, uh, big private companies. We don't need a big public system, cent centralized public system. What we need is a public decentralized system. So now the plan is, ta is talking about decentralized which is positive. Uh, the problem is that it, it is not the same thing to decentralize and to give power to, uh, to, to communities, local communities and local facilities. Uh, it is not the same thing as just to deconcentrate. When you send, you take, you still have a heavy administration, but you send the people doing the administration in, in many regions, or many, many, it's not the same thing. Huh? Where, the thing we need to share is power, power between the system and the, and the population and power uh, between the physician and all the other health uh, workers and health uh, professionals. So it's not really clear that we are going to uh, decentralize the way we, we would be supposed to do. For the private part, this is the threatening part because we are not into the same discourse as we see right now in Western Canada, for example, where you have that physician Brian Bay that have been fighting for years to bring to bring the Supreme Court of Canada to to break actually the Canadian law that protects the public system. You have these big sites that have been going on for a decade right now in Canada. 
So he wants the, the, the private money to really change the system. The model is the United States. It's, it's, it's really complicated to understand how can someone get inspired about in, uh, with the United States about healthcare, but we, we have this. The proposal in Quebec right now is not this one. It's not on this front. This front they want to they want uh, to uh, to uh, attack the public system. They think that we should pay publicly for everything. What we should have private facilities like the uh, the medicine familiar or other chirurgical uh, facilities and these kind of things to offer um, their services. I see no use to this. I see no uh, no plus for this. When you create these facilities, actually, what you want is is private money to bring the even even if you don't have private money to pay for the services. Even even if you don't bring in the private insurer, which is uh, the kiss of death of the of the system, you as, at, at, at the moment where you build these private facilities, you have people that need to a profit from this system. You need to produce profit, so you need to find a way to uh, to make the system uh, more expensive. And you're gonna see these, of course, these clinics concentrate themselves into a neighborhood where you have people with more money uh, to offer these services also. So so right now, it's uh, I, I don't see any advantage to uh, that part of the proposal, which is on, is on the table right now. And it can be threatened because the more you build this private actor into the system, the more political power they, they get, and the more uh, they, they be become able to influence a lot the rest of the system, the government, and everything, to open always new spaces to uh, the private sector. So, so we're not at all uh, convinced um, by the, the plan right now, uh, even if there's some uh, some interesting ideas, most of it is not convincing or even threatening as the part of the plan. Yeah, um, you mentioned something interesting about, you know, the concentration and wealthy and too much. Can you spend a little bit more on that threat aspect of it? Um, we, uh, We've seen for, for, for many years on in Quebec, we've seen that uh, the systems, uh, it, it tells us you have some health minister, even if the numbers doesn't show this, uh, you, have, you add some health minister that say, we're going to bring private uh, clinics to uh, unload the public system, they're going to help us, they're gonna, they are more, or more uh, um, uh, efficient in the public system, so we should just give them a part of the work and it's going to be all beautiful and they just take this, they, they, they manage uh, these, these cases and everyone is happy. They've done this especially with three clinics right now, which is uh, Rockland and MD in uh, Outremont. You have uh, Distrante uh, Medic in uh, Brossard and you get the third one, I don't remember the name, in Laval. So these three clinics uh, went you know, establish themselves in neighborhood where they can have these contracts from the public center and where they can sell also other services to the, the in these neighborhood where you you have a lot of uh, of uh, people with money so they haven't gone to uh, Oshlaga Maisonneuve they haven't gone to Montreal Nord to offer these services you get into a logic where you we feel that you go, you have some part of the population in Quebec as anywhere else right now that is wealthy and doesn't want doesn't want to get stuck anymore with the rest of the people into a health system. They want to have their the their proper facilities where they can get access to the system, and they just don't care about the rest of that system if it's going to work or not. They just want to be have their part of the world that is clean and uh, working, and uh, and the rest is not a problem for them. Yeah, it creates yeah. sociological issues. Yeah, that's. Very uh, compelling, I guess. Are there plans that are there aspects of the plan that do seem positive, like they could work? Is there any side of it that um, might have success or uh, could be amended that would be successful? 
Uh, as I said, there's two things that could be positive. The, the first one is uh, that we share part of the workload with the other health professional. Uh, so that part is interesting. I think that physicians themselves recognize right now that it's, it's just overwhelming for them to be at the center of so many things. So even especially the younger generation of physicians now, they're more open to, to split, to share the, the workload. So, so that could be a positive outcome of the actual plan and the other one it would be uh, the de the decentralization if we are serious about it we, we doubt that we are right now but it's uh, it's interesting to um, explore that path so as soon as you get that thing because we've been talking about this for years that it is it's quite new that the government recognized that we should go we should uh, decentralize that system so it's not the way we want right now but the discourse has been changing and it's it could become an opportunity as well to have a real de uh, decentralization. So eventually, maybe not with this deal, but we could see a positive decentralization in our future, perhaps? Uh, perhaps. <laughs> perhaps we're far from it right now. I mean, we, we have a we have a government that is a technocrat uh, that is uh, quite to the close to private uh, interest, private business. So we should not expect uh, big changes. Uh, but if you have this government, I can recognize that concentration, for example, have been an error for the last 20, 20, 25 years. That that could be some interesting point to work on in the future. Yeah. Um, so there's obviously a lot of um, aspects that put a strain on Quebec's healthcare system. Um, I guess most recently it's been defunding. Um, could you speak about the defunding of the healthcare system a little bit? Yes, yes, uh, we see idea is that there's three problems with the, the healthcare system. The first one is the, the, the concentration, the centralization of a public system. When you got a public system that is really big, really technocratic, bureaucratic, and works actually systematically copy the private system, it's, it's, not, it's not useful at all. It's an inhuman uh, system. Uh, neoliberalism is not about, about privatizing things necessarily. It can be just to make the public as as bad as the private system with the population. So that's the first problem uh, for the last 20, 25 years of, health, of the health system in Quebec. The second one is the power to the physician uh, power, as I, I, I mentioned many, many, many times uh, already. Uh, and I haven't even mentioned the financial aspect of it because the, the money they make, the, the, the physician, in Quebec and in Canada, but in Quebec mostly, it's 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 so huge. I mean, it, when you compare it to the what the the, the income of the, the major part of the population, uh, it's bigger than the United States, and we are totally um, disproportionate com in comparison to France or to UK, where a physician doesn't win, uh, doesn't doesn't have an income which is eight nine times. The, the the average level of the population in France and UK you have three times four times and but here it's it's just totally disproportionate and of course we can say concentrated so much power and financial resources into these the the physician that at a certain point we can say that these resources uh, we miss them in other uh, sectors so these are the two first problem and the third one of course it, it have been the uh, uh, austerity uh, politics, the, 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 the cuts that we've seen in many moments since uh, the mid-90s where we, where we had the first uh, big wave of cut in the, in the public system.